Welcome to Design for Engineers. I'd like to introduce you to the module and some of the team who made it. We hope you enjoy studying the module as much as we've enjoyed making it. So I just want to show you something that um, I came across recently. It's, it's a sink strainer and it was actually designed by an OU student. I'm Georgie and my contribution to the module has been about designing for people. That is the people who'll use and interact with the products and services that are designed. I also look at the impacts that design has on the environment. I've particularly enjoyed working on the videos and activities for the module because they really bring the material to life. I thought it was really interesting to see something that has come from being an idea on paper as, as part of a piece of work on a module to actually something that's in manufacturing and being, being sold. I've, I've got one of these at home already. Really? Uh, yeah, I immediately really? recognised it. I'm Robin Roy. My background is in engineering and design, and I have a special interest in creative thinking. In the module, I focus on the phase of designing in which new ideas are conceived and developed, the most creative phase. I hope that my material will help you use and develop your creative abilities and so generate great concept designs. It's a complete redesign of the usual metal sink strainer. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very flexible, so you can, you can adapt it to, to use it in different sh shapes of sink. So it is a, quite a nice creative solution. Mm -hmm. And very exciting shape, I would say so. It's yeah. lovely, isn't it? Yeah, really yeah. aesthetically pleasing as well as uh, functional. I'm Theo. I'm an architect. And for me, design is about thinking with your hands, thinking with models, thinking with prototypes, thinking with sketches and diagrams about the effect that designs can have in our lives. How do they make us feel psychologically, emotionally, physically? How do they make our lives more comfortable, more pleasurable, or even more democratic? And that's the focus of my teaching. So even though it looks like quite a simple thing, there's some significant engineering challenges. It's a very interesting example, I think, of what we're trying to teach. You have to understand how the material is going to behave. You have to, uh, the, this problem of making it uh, stick and stay. Then the, the problems of the actual production. I'm Jeff. I have a technical and design background, and I bring these to the module. I like making things that look good, feel good, and work well and of course have added value. I find that in industrial engineering projects that you always use design thinking in terms of creativity, in terms of technical things, and of course, most importantly, in terms of the needs of users. Well, I think this product really embodies what this module is about. I mean, seeing the problem, stopping the hair going down mm. the drain, uh, generating a new idea about what is the sink strainer, but also working at the details of design and uh, manufacturing and materials. This module will give you the essential design skills and knowledge for your educational progression and for your professional engineering aspirations. And we hope you'll have fun doing it. I have a rather active life, but nevertheless, a large part of my day involves some form of sitting. In Western societies, we rarely sit on the floor. Sitting is supported by various forms of structures, chairs, stools, benches, or beanbags. Sometimes it's very hard to imagine all the various places and locations where I sit during the day. It is indeed very hard to work out how much time I spend sitting down. Block 1 explores various types of chairs or seats, but only as an entry point in this vast world of designs and design processes. Let me say a few words about the content of this block by describing my favorite seat. I really like this bench. It's just an old trunk that has been carved quite ambiguously into a seat, but also it is a sculpture. The shape of this seat really reflects the shape of my body, creating a comfortable feeling and supporting quite well my back. 
It is also very thoughtfully placed in this location, so you have a very nice view. The core design idea, which is a cross between a bench and a sculpture with these nice animal forms on the side, make clear association with nature around us, but also triggers emotions and feelings of playfulness and innocence. Maybe the material itself, the wood, contributes in this warm feeling. This is the beauty of design. We relate to designs physically as we touch them or rest on them, but we also relate to design psychologically as designs trigger our emotions, feelings and sometimes memories, and that is through their form, their colors or materials. In fact, designs are cultural objects. For instance, in societies like Japan, sitting on a floor is much more common. In this block you will learn how to look around you with a critical and inquisitive eye, trying to discover all these little factors that influence the creation of design, whether these are related with the human body, psychology, culture, or indeed the engineering of the object. This is the main message that I would like you to take away from this block. But in order to develop this inquisitive and critical eye, you will need another skill. You will need the ability to think not only with your brain, but also with your hands. And this is the second but equally important lesson from this blog. In this blog you will learn how to develop this ability to turn ideas and thoughts into drawing, sketches and models. And indeed, this is one of the most distinctive design skills that you will develop throughout the module. You don't need to be an artist, you just need to be able to think and communicate your ideas through these tools, models, drawings or sketches. So why don't you just relax, follow the module materials and let the module guide you through these skills.